The Red Hydrogen One is probably one of the most expensive phones I've ever tested here on my channel, coming in at a whopping $1,300. I originally purchased the $1,600 titanium version, but that's been delayed for a few more months. Red was nice enough to send out the aluminum version, along with this massive sticky paperweight thing to help tide us over until the titanium version comes out. One of the reasons these phones are probably so expensive might be because we're paying for the fancy metal and plastic emblems and laid into the cardboard box. Do people normally display the box their phone comes in? Announced over a year ago, with many delays, it's finally time to assess the build quality of the Red Hydrogen One. Let's get started. The first impression right out of the box is that this thing is massive and hefty. Metal is everywhere. With deep, unique, rugged, corrugated grips along both sides and the back panel, it's definitely one of the most unique looking phones of this year. The biggest high point of this phone has been the display. Red claims that their four view light field display creates an experience beyond 3D that the world never saw coming. The Hydrogen One has two cameras on the back, so it can take these 3D holographic picture things. You can get a pretty good idea of what it's supposed to look like as I wiggle the phone back and forth. Just in real life, you don't need to wiggle the phone to get this effect because it's built right into the screen. It's really kind of like an automatic digital magic eye. It's interesting for sure. And with a $1,300 price tag, we hold the advertising and promises to a whole new level. I'm not the biggest fan of meaningless advertising buzzwords. So when Red says, the world never saw this coming, I gotta step back and point out that HTC did basically this exact same thing seven years ago. Seven. Back in the year 2011, a year before my YouTube channel was even born, the HTC released the Evo 3D with dual 3D cameras on the back. I just picked up this little guy for $60 on eBay. We'll do a little camera comparison between the Evo 3D and its Red Hydrogen One counterpart. Holding both phones side by side shows the exact same 3D depth effect going on with each screen. We get the same shifty pop with both images. This is probably one of those situations where Red would have been better off not hyping the display. The technology has definitely improved in the last seven years, of course, but it's still been around for a long time. And it's not the $1,300 display I feel we were promised. Let's jump into the durability with a scratch test. Like always, we check to see what the holographic screen is made from. Plastic was scratched at a level three, glass scratches at a six, and real sapphire crystal scratches at a level eight or nine. Red is using Gorilla Glass to cover their holographic tech, and indeed we see scratches at a level six, with deeper grooves at a level seven. Similar to the Razer phone, we have some massive speaker grills at the top and bottom of this phone. The top grill houses dual 8.3 megapixel front-facing cameras that can also produce the same auto-stereogrammic 3D effect as the rear cameras. Both image sensors are protected with glass along with the other sensors on the right side. The speaker grill itself is made from black plastic, similar to the Razer phone. The bottom speaker grill is the same black plastic, which can be removed. Interestingly enough, even though the exterior plastic grill looks like it has two speaker locations, there's only one small interior slit where the sound comes out. It looks super glamorous and pretty on the outside, but rather underwhelming in reality. So far, the Red Hydrogen One is not quite turning out like its hypothetical Snapchat filter implied it would. These sides, though, are impressive. Made with thick textured aluminum ridges, there is no phone quite like it. The volume buttons are both made from metal. The rugged aluminum finger grips are mirrored on the opposite side. And this includes a dedicated camera button with a small red plastic inlay. Seems to be Red's theme, no complaints. The fingerprint scanner and power button is also over here and can be scratched. Although with the height of the ridges on either side protecting it from rubbing against anything, I highly doubt scratching will be an issue. Even then, if it does get heavily scratched, it still recognizes my fingerprint and functions every single time. The top of the phone is made from aluminum, along with the SIM and SD card tray. And strangely enough, this flagship still has a headphone jack. Probably because this phone was announced a year ago when headphone jacks were still cool. Either way, I'm glad it's here. The bottom has a USB-C port and a lot more metal. Now for the back of the phone. Red has put a lot of emphasis on their industrial aluminum design with durable Kevlar panels, which I'm not really sure what they mean by durable. It scratches about the same level as plastic and peels up like a giant sticker. At least the copper accessory attachment pad doesn't peel off. That would be awkward. That part might still be real, although no accessories exist yet, so it's hard to say for sure. 
the thick ribbed aluminum backplate is all metal. You can see the silver shine through under the black coating. I wonder if these ribs will help guide the hypothetical accessories into place when they become available. The Red Media Machine logo is made from metal with an unscratchable red inlay in the center. Kind of neat. The massive camera lens is covering dual 12.3 megapixel cameras, both of which are used for that 3D effect and have no wide angle or telephoto options. The dual tone flash is made from plastic and we have another scratchable Kevlar sticker panel up here at the top. I'm pretty sure I saw a dbrand version of this for like 10 bucks. The design of the Hydrogen 1 is a lot like getting catfished on Tinder. The pixel orientation of the Hydrogen 1 might be a tad different than your standard LCD, so it gets that holographic depth effect, but it is still an LCD. We should see the pixels on the Red Hydrogen's 5.7 inch 1440p IPS LCD start to go black with the heat from my red lighter but when the heat is removed, the pixels start to recover. This proves that taking a lighter to the screen has been useful at least one time in the last 100 smartphone durability tests. I knew it would be useful someday. Thumbs up to the hardworking lighter doing its job. And now for the bin test. With how much metal is oozing out the sides of this phone, it's pretty reasonable to assume it's built like a tank. And the only way to know for sure is to apply unreasonable pressure to an unreasonably priced device. But when doing so, we get zero flex, not even a creak or a pop. The Red Hydrogen 1 might be seven years late with screen technology using misleading plastic speaker grills with built-in Kevlar stickers, but they sure did make a very rigid and structural smartphone. Is it worth $1,300? I'm not a big fan of the over-promising, under-delivering, premium-costing buzzwords, so I'm going to have to go with a no on this one, for now. I definitely see potential down the road, though, when the price drops by probably half. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed watching Constructive Destruction and come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.